This is the second video in my three-part video series, How to Pack for a Trip. This video is about actually packing your case and it starts with a disclaimer. I don't pack the prettiest case ever. So long as my stuff all gets where it's going, undamaged, I don't feel the need to create something that looks amazing. So don't judge me, okay? You might pack a neater case, but this is what works for me. First, using the list you created as per the previous video in this series, get everything you're taking, apart from the things you have to pack at the last minute, of course, together. I usually chuck everything on my bed, putting stuff that's going in my hand luggage aside in a separate pile. If you're gonna be separated from your main luggage, for example, if you're flying, put anything valuable in your carry-on luggage. As you get the stuff you're taking together, cross the items off your list and transfer to a separate list anything that can't go in until the last minute. Once you've got right through your packing list, review how much there is to pack and decide what size case you need. I often plan to wear my heaviest or bulkiest items. If I'm taking walking boots, for example, I often travel in them and pack my lighter shoes. As for type of luggage, I almost always take a wheelie case these days. The only time I take a rucksack or a backpack is if I'm gonna to have to carry my stuff a long way over rough ground or if I'm camping. So choose your bag or case, and then there's a few things to do to get the stuff you've decided to take ready to go in it. Put footwear into bags to stop it marking your clothes, turning the soles together so the uppers don't get marked either. Use bags and pots to coral small items. Cloth shoe bags are great, as are plastic Ziploc bags if you don't mind using plastic. I put small items of jewellery in a pot cushioned with cotton wool and then I pop that pot in my toiletries bag. If you're taking a lot of jewellery, you might consider a jewellery roll, a soft roll-up case for all your jewellery. If you're worried about toiletries leaking, there are a couple of things you can do. To be honest, this has rarely happened to me, but it is a real pain when it does. So squeeze all the air out of soft-sided containers and then replace the lid and take the lids off bottles, cover them with plastic wrap and replace the lids or put items you're particularly concerned about in Ziploc bags. To minimize creasing, roll your clothes rather than folding them. If you're only going on a short trip, so you've got a relatively small amount of clothing to take, make a pile of all your clothes laying flat. Now I've chosen fairly non-creasy clothes already, so I'm not being ultra careful here. If you're taking a white cotton shirt for a smart business presentation, you might want to add some layers of tissue and lie it out more carefully, but I generally find this works fine. As you make the pile, turn your light colored clothes inside out and put them and the least creasy clothes on the top of the pile because the ones on the top of the pile are the ones that are gonna end up in the middle of your roll. That is safest from marking, but most likely to crease. When you've made your pile, roll it up. If you're going on a longer trip and taking more clothes, and especially if you're not going to be able to unpack fully, so you're gonna be living out of your case, you might not want to put all your clothing into a single roll. Instead, roll each piece up individually so you can place them side by side in the case, like in this picture. If you put a pile of folded up clothes in your case, you have to rummage through it to find the piece you want. And if all your clothes are rolled together, you have to unroll them all every time you want something. But if you roll each item individually and place them side by side, you can easily lay your hand on a specific piece of clothing and you're still getting the benefit of your clothes creasing less than if you folded them. If you're using a soft-sided case and there's the slightest chance it might get wet, you might wanna put your clothes in a plastic bag or even a dry sack. While backpacking around Australia many years ago, I got my rucksack back at Melbourne Airport completely drenched. Not only were my clothes all wet, but the dye from a pair of trousers had soaked through my other clothes. And a couple of years ago, I traveled by bus in Canada through a rainstorm and my case came out of the hold wet with my clothes damp inside it. So if there's the slightest chance your soft-sided case will get wet, don't take the risk of your clothes getting damaged. Okay, now you're ready to start placing items in your case. Unless you've cleaned the case, I wouldn't recommend packing on your bed because the wheels will probably be dirty. I'm packing on the floor here. Because I've corralled my items together, you can see that I've got a relatively small number of items to go in, a roll of clothes, a wash bag, shoes and shoe bags. So in they each go with the heaviest items going at the bottom of the case, by which I mean both the bottom when it's laying flat and the bottom when it's upright. Once you've put the main items in, fill the holes between them with soft items that don't matter if they crease, like underwear and pyjamas. Finally, if your case is going to be out of your sight at any point, lock it. Not that this will stop anyone getting into it, though it might be a deterrent, but more because if a thief has to cut the case or break your lock to get in, you'll know it's been tampered with as soon as you lay eyes on it again. Right. You're good to go, enjoy your trip. Subscribe to this channel, stay tuned for the final video in this series, how to unpack your case. Comment below with your packing tips. Like and share this video, thank you so much.